Hey guys, Dan Vega here, back with another tutorial, and today we're talking about primitive data types in Java. So if you're brand new to the Java programming language, this lesson is going to be right up your alley. If you've been using it a little while, I still feel like there's something you can gain here. Specifically, we're going to talk about the different primitive data types and when to use them. So Java is often referred to as an object-oriented programming language. And while it does have a ton of OOP capabilities, it's not a full object-oriented programming language because of these things that we call primitives in the language. So a primitive data type is predefined by the language and is named by these reserved keywords. So there are a total of eight different primitives in the language, and they are byte short, int long, float double, char, and boolean. Now each of these eight primitive types have corresponding wrapper types, which we're not going to cover just yet, but that brings us to a total of 16 different data types, plus one special data type called string, which brings us to a total of 17 different data types in the Java programming language. But here I just want to focus in on the primitive data types. So one thing you'll notice in the description is the different sizes of our different data types. And if you start to go through them, you can see that one is almost double in size than its predecessor. So a byte uh, holds an 8-bit signed integer, whereas a short is a 16 and 32 and 64 and so on. So now that we know a little bit about what the different primitive types are, I want to dive into a demo here and start to play around with them. And let's really start to take a look at when we would want to use one data type over another. Okay, so I'm here in IntelliJ and I'm going to create a new project. So let's go create a new project. This is just going to be a basic Java project. I'm going to choose command line app. And let's go ahead and name this <clears throat> primitive data types. And I'm just going to use this default package. You can use whatever. And we're going to click finish. So. We have this really simple project here, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm going to paste some code in here, just some boilerplate code to get us started so that we can start walking through the different data types. So now we've all probably done something like this, int x equals 10, and we understand that we're assigning a variable name x, a literal value of 10, with a data type of int. So we've all done that, but I don't think we really truly understand what we're doing at that point. So what I want to do is walk through the different ones. So we have this thing called a byte data type, and if we say byte b equals 10, that looks like it's a valid expression. And the reason it is, is because a byte has a minimum value of negative 128 and a maximum value of 127. And so when we assign 10 to that, that falls within that range. So the program allocates a certain amount of memory based on the type that you give it. And in this case, uh, it's an, we looked at that chart before, it was an 8 sign bit integer. So we're, 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 we're within that range, so this is a valid expression. Now, if we try to put a 1,000 in here, the, um, editor, the IDE here is going to complain and say, um, well, you told me that was a byte, but really what you uh, gave me was an int. And so what you're trying to do is not going to work. So if we come back down, that should be just fine. So if we wanted to, we could print this out and say byte b. And if we go ahead and run this, really, you know, this is nothing special here. Um, it really should just print out byte and then the value of b, which is going to be 100, and it does. 
So nothing special there. But now we have another data type here called short. And short starts to grow a little. So you can see that the min value is negative 32,768, while the max value is 32,767. So that's what our short is. So again, if we say short s equals 10,000, that falls within that range, so we're good to go. Obviously, if we try to tack on one more zero, that's 100,000. That is outside of the range of a short, and we'll therefore throw an error. And again, it says, hey, we are looking for a short, and you gave us an int. So you can see that, um, maybe based on those two examples, but int is going to be pretty common in most programs. Um, it's safe to assume that if you don't know what the type is and it's a number, you can probably use an int. So let's look at int. Int is, um, the min value for that is 2,147,483,000. To the same number minus one in the positive direction so an int is going to be a pretty pretty big range of numbers here so if we wanted to just type in a bunch of numbers here that looks like it's too big that looks like it's okay uh, that would be just fine now something else you can do in Java since I think I believe Java 7 to make numbers more readable just in programs, you can use these underscores where you need to. So I'm going to say 2,147,483,647. And that's a valid number because it falls within that range. But if we bump that up one more, that is no longer a valid integer. That number is too large. So now one other thing we can do here is we can define a long. And a long, similar to an integer, this, this number 100 falls within that range. But a long is a much bigger wide range, uh, range of, of value, accepted values. So just by looking at this, you might think that this is a integer. Um, it is. but in this case we're saying it's a long. One way that we can specifically tell it that it's a long is by providing an L. You can use a lowercase L or an uppercase L. I like to use an uppercase L just because it doesn't get confused with uh, ones um, and it just looks, you can look at it right away and tell that that's a long. So now if I wanted to I could put this number in here and let's say, let's go eight. And now that number is a little bit too big for an int, but it works just fine for a long. So those four data types primarily deal with whole numbers, numeric values. What about when we wanna start introducing decimal points? So in this case, we have two different types of data types to deal with decimal points. One is a float which deals with single precision and a double which you're probably going to guess right deals with double precision. So one thing we can do let's go ahead and create a new float just like we've been doing f equals 5. So that would work out just fine but what about if we wanted to create um, a again we're dealing with decimal points at this point what if we wanted to create a decimal 5.75 well that's funny what's going on here uh, because I got an error so let's look at this so it says I required a float but you gave me a double and why is that well what happens in Java when we assign a literal so this number here is a literal um, this would be an expression if x was a valid uh, variable. But in this case, we're providing a literal number of 5.75. And when we do that, Java just by default assumes that's a double. Well, we have a way that we can tell Java that this number that we're providing is indeed a float. And 
it's by giving it a uh, lowercase or uppercase f. So we can also use uh, doubles. So if we want to say double d equals 1.25, now you'll notice we don't have to explicitly say that that number is a double because by default Java is going to assume that it is. If you wanted to, you could say it, that it is a double. So to round these out, the final two are character or char. So I can say char c is equal to c, and that's a valid um, expression. If I put some extra characters in here, that's not going to work. Too many characters in a character literal, so that would work. You can also use Unicode. Um, I'm not gonna go through using that in this tutorial, but you can certainly enter Unicode as um, a valid character. Finally, we have Boolean, and Boolean is really only two different types. Uh, I think we already have that. So this can only be true or false. Um, so if we use true there, that's a valid expression. If we were to put 10 in there, obviously you can see what's going on. Um, we looked for a Boolean, we found an integer, and so let's go, whoops, false. So those are the eight different data types in Java and the eight different primitive data types, uh, if, I, if I will, in Java. And you can see that the reason that we have different data types is because they, they're able to hold different values. So looking back at our numbers, most of the time I'm just gonna use int, unless I know for a fact that, say I had like a counter that I, that I know is gonna be from one to 10. You know, you can save yourself a little memory in your program by saying, hey, this number is never gonna get bigger than 10. Let's go ahead and create a data type of byte. So I hope that helps with explaining some of the differences here with the primitive data types. And if you have any questions, please let me know. If you like this video, please give me a like. And if you can, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next 